Hey guys, Scott from Aristocob.com here. And Seth Markwood, the one and only here as well. And together, the three of us and you being the one and only you that you are, unless your name is John Smith, in which case I, su- I suppose you've lived with that all your life. Why'd you, why'd you got it? John Jacob Jingleheimer Schmidt? <laughs> no, I said Smith. Smith. Smith? Smith? <laughs> Smith? Mm. Close this... Enough. Somehow you stumbled upon hey, Mark there goes Men's Breakfast John Club. Jacob Jingleheimer Smith. Here it is. So, morning, boy. Fa la 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 la. <laughs> Good morning. You are in it's an odd, it's gotta, odd it's, mood. You know why? Don't mention the weather. Because it is just so cold in the shop here today. <laughs> it's oh, so we cold. We just can't be happy. You know, it's really hot. So, hey, before we light up, I want to show you something. Show me. Uh, we talked about a couple weeks ago um, when when Chris sent me a whole bunch of bamboo reeds. Yes. Why he did that. And I said, because he saw the oldest pipe in my collection. This is, um, it is mm. guesstimated, this is about 107 years old. And this is a bamboo, I'm sorry, a bamboo. This is a pipe that was sold by Missouri Mirisham. And it would have come with a piece of river reed which is very similar to bamboo uh, as the stem. And uh, it has a cover cap or a wind cap on it. And you'll notice I misspoke last week. I said that the, the, the it didn't say Missouri Mirisham, that it said uh, H. Tibby and Son. This says Tibby, Missouri Mirisham. So this was at a, at a period of time where they were using both names, mm-hmm. the company name and the family name. But I just love the looks of that. I picked that up on eBay quite a while ago. And had intended to, intended to do something with it, but I had no bamboo and no time. So I've taken that bamboo, I've cut down a section of it, uh, tapered the end. I tried to do that with a pencil sharpener, but this is so strong yeah. and and almost it's so hard that it's almost glass like. It didn't want to even bite into the mm. pencil sharpener. Yeah. So I tapered that a little bit on my on my uh, disc sander. I'm a little concerned that I'm going to split the the corn cob, um, but there we go. Cool. There is my new hundred plus year old Missouri Mirisham pipe. Looks like a little toilet when you leave the lid up. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's a plumbing pipe. Anyway, I thought I was gonna I'm gonna smoke this today, and then and then it'll probably just go on the shelf for the most part. Cool. Well, what uh, do you want to smoke in that? Uh, good question. We got a couple things in front of us that we've been thinking about or putting off. Do you have anything that's old and? Oh, this one's been open. I bet we've smoked this then. This is a, a Savinelli uh, Black Cavendish. What this one? Yeah, let's do that one. Lane Limited Crown Achievement. So the people that bring us Lane One Q um, have come up with a couple limited edition, I guess, tinned. Products? Okay, hold on a second. This rare mixture is composed of the finest Latakia, Virginia, and Oriental tobaccos. When it was first introduced, the blend was the blend also contained Perique, but this element was removed circa 2004. We have once again added Perique okay. to this faithful <laughs> recreation of a story then that's brand. Not, then that's not the tobacco for the day. I'm, I'm sorry, I am okay. I'm not going to funk up my hundred year old pipe. Let's see if we've smoked this before. Let's uh, Which, do it. Richt ist Todlich. Probably have. I'm worried that Savinelli we have. Black Cavendish. I think we did. I know I smoked that. Uh, I it picked, smells good. Let's I smoke picked it, anyway. it up in Switzerland. Whether we smoked it or not, let's All smoke right. it anyway. I picked this up in Switzerland several months ago and uh, was yeah, pleased with it. Yeah, I think we did smoke that. But yeah, that, that'll be a good one to, to bust into this one, into this pipe. All right, you go ahead and load up. In the meantime, a couple things I wanted to show you today and talk about. Um, the first one, back in 1987, when I was uh, starting my career at ShopSmith, the power tool, wood, uh, tool company in Dayton, Ohio. I was two. Yes, you were. Um, I spent the first couple weeks in training, uh, learning how to use the, the equipment and how to make it not look as awkward as we did on the first day. (laughs) And in fact, uh, the gentleman who was the head of the training department 
I ran into him at AWFS in Las Vegas a few months back. Huh. Yeah, he uh, he now works for um, kind of a wholesale division of Woodcraft. Cool. And I, I see him every now and again at a trade show. Anyway, um, after we kind of learned, the, the demonstration was what they called all the right moves. And believe it or not, one of these days I should record that and kind of uh, talk it through, maybe on the Mr. Tool Hunter channel. Um, Wood wishes. It is so choreographed, it's unbelievable. And, and the reason for that is you can make that demonstration look twice as complicated as it is if you take the saw blade off and put it down on the little tool holding board. And then you stand up and you take the guard off and you put that down. And then you stand up and you look and you, you go for your drill chuck and you reach down and you get that. And then you go you know back for your Allen wrench and you get that. Yeah. You know, as many things as you could do in one motion, you do. So you take the guard and the blade off at the same time while you're down there putting the blade off, take, or putting the blade away, you know you need the drill bit or whatever the next thing right. is you're going to demo, bring it up with you. Or if you're making a cross cut on the table saw and the next thing you're going to show is the disc sander, you leave the guard on, just pull the saw blade off, put it down on the tray, lift, come back up with the saw or the uh, sanding disc. And it was amazing how, in, in watching people fumble and stumble in classes after I took uh, after I took that class, how learning some of the the shortcuts mm -hmm. it's sort of like how you lay out a kitchen with uh, a work triangle because you know you're going to need to spend some time in the sink, you're going to need to spend some time prepping on the counter, and some time cooking. And so having those three things super far apart or around an island right. is really inconvenient. So anyway, um, the last day we had a bunch of time to kill. And the, the other side story is the, the class started with a group of, I think, eight people. And by the end of two weeks, there were three of us. Yeah, they kept dropping like flies. And um, the flies Was that because they couldn't cut it or because they... It was Wait. every imaginable thing. It was a, a guy got a, another job offer. A guy got a counter offer from the company he just left. A guy realized that he had no mechanical aptitude and this right. was no fun. You know, all, yeah. those, all those things. There were just some grumpy people in that group. Anyway, three of us uh, survived, and I'm, I'm connected to one of those three to this day on, on LinkedIn. Anyway, the last day, um, we got to just play. And the thing that I made, uh, one of the things I made that day, is this thing called a tonfa. And um, th this has been carried in every single vehicle that I've owned ever since then. And uh, I know that you've seen this around. Do you know what, it, what it's good for? Beating people. Well, kind of. Yeah, it is It is a defensive and an offensive tool. Mm. Mm. Yeah, it, it's it's just like the modern-day billy clubs, yeah. the nightsticks that cops carry, but it's it's ancient. And the way you size this thing is you size it to where it's a bit longer than your forearm, and that helps to protect you. If somebody were to kick or punch or hit you with something... It becomes your Batman It's a shi It's a shield, yep. right? It's a shield. Um, you make it a Wait, hair man. longer than your elbow so that you can use that behind you if someone's coming up behind you. You could use that to you know, take somebody in the chin, I suppose. Uh, of course, you can swing it and hit people with it, but that's you run the risk of, uh, of losing it if you get too crazy you with take it. Take it like this. Yeah, well, sure. Sure. You that's can, how you kill zombies with you it. You can get all... all <laughs> oh, my. All... Uh, uh, what's his Shaun name? of the Dead. We talked about it earlier. Rick Grimes. No, no. I was thinking he's of, the he's the uh, I was thinking main person in that documentary. I'm thinking of Patriot with. Um, gosh, why can't I think of his name? Nicholas Cage. No, no. The other Snake alcoholic. Eyes. <laughs> Mel Gibson. Mel Gibson would that be doing that right. with a hatchet. Heath Ledger. <laughs> <laughs> That's Shaun of the Dead. <laughs> No, anyway, Patriot. I, I had a bro worker notice this the other day in, in my van and ask me what the heck it was. And I thought, you know, this is kind of cool. I mean, I've had it around a long time, and, I, and I've never used Almost it. Almost as long as you've had me around. Yep. I've had it in my hand before when somebody was road raging all over me one day. Hmm. And I thought, crap, I'm going to need this. Yeah. And uh, 
he was all talk, thank goodness. But anyway, tonfa. Also could be used for breaking a window. Oh, sure. Yeah, lots of things it could be used for. That one's never been used for anything. It, has, it hadn't uh, cracked a skull yet. <laughs> Where's the zombie outbreak when you need one? I haven't used it Am for, I right? for disciplining my children. All right, I'm going to load up this pipe. You should do that. You have I'm something to talk see about? see how this smokes. Um, yeah. I have a, a technology thing I got the other day. It was on sale. Pretty kind of cool. Um, it's, uh, there are all different versions of this. Um, some more portable than others. Uh, but this is a, uh, that's right, it's a flash drive. Um, it's created by SanDisk. Is the SanDisk wireless flash drive. So here's what's cool about this. You plug it in, you can add files to it. Videos, pictures, documents, whatever kind of files. The normal files that you would put on a flash drive. Um, and so the first first cool feature, it's powered by an SD card. So what? I have the third... I'm sorry. It's Yeah, a micro it's SD. It's a flash drive with an SD card. Yes. Yeah, so <clears throat> the SD card is where the actual storage comes in. So I've got a 32 gig SD card. It's feasible. You could have SD cards, micro SD cards, and swap them out. You could get a up to 128 micro SD card and put it in here and have just a ton of storage. So as a flash drive, it works as a flash drive. But anytime it's plugged into a computer, it's also charging an internal battery, and the internal battery um, allows for four hours of Wi-Fi connectivity. <clears throat> now. You're not using this to connect to a local Wi-Fi to connect to the internet. This little device actually is a Wi-Fi hotspot. Um, and I, I forget... What do there you was, mean by that? Well, there was something else that we had talked about that, that works the same way with Wi-Fi. I don't remember what it was, but think of it more like Bluetooth. Okay, When we think Wi-Fi, we think connecting to the internet. This doesn't do that. This is this uses Wi-Fi to connect it to your phone, your computer, your iPad, your Android device. And so, so something that does not itself have either a USB port or uh, you could use it to connect to something with a USB port. Right, but I'm saying but you, don't you can use to. that to to do things with your phone, for example, that you couldn't plug that into your phone. All right, so there's a little button on top. Hold it down to turn it on. And now this is emitting a Wi-Fi signal. Um, just like if something were emitting a Bluetooth signal. So my phone um, is going to recognize this on Wi-Fi. There, it pops up. So just like if I were to connect to my what home Wi-Fi. What am I seeing there? They're seeing, it says, okay. SanDisk Sand flash drive. Okay, You can password protect it, so I've done that. So my phone recognizes it. It's already connected. So right now, my cell phone is connected to this little USB stick. So there's an app that comes with it. There's the app loading up. And inside of the app, I can actually search the files that are on here. Um, so documents, music, pictures, videos. I can search them. And it would be cool if I could take them off of this drive and put them on my phone, which I can do. So, um, And I, that, that, that transfer can go both ways. So one of the, the ways I intend to use this is if we're ever out in the field filming um, using our phones, uh, we can connect to it, upload the video files directly to this flash drive so that my 16 gigabyte phone doesn't run out of memory when I have a 32 gig so backup. In, in a sense, and this I know this is bad, a it. bad comparison, it's but it's, it's like having a little miniature cloud storage device. Right. Not, it's yeah. not cloud. No. But, but, but it's all right able, here. It's, but... it's a wireless storage device. Right. Okay. So it's, it's, just, it's an external, think of it as an external hard drive okay. that I can connect to wirelessly, okay? But what's even cooler, I think, um, is that being able to connect to it, I can upload documents into it from my phone, but I can also stream documents from it to my phone. So, this is, I have my phone muted, not nearly as impressive. <laughs> Navigation bar to this is a video. Streaming to my cell phone from this flash drive. So I'm watching I'm watching a pre-installed video pre-installed on the flash drive on my phone. It's streaming. 
<clears throat> you can have multiple connections, I believe. So I think that we could be connected to it together um, at the would, same would time and be, be watching, watching separate file? things. I don't believe so. I think it connects uh, a couple of different connections. So I could don't have this. I could have this in the car, and and one of the kids could have the iPad. And be watching videos that are not taking up the memory on my iPad. That is correct. Or, or using the 3G. That's correct. And, and if I'm correct on that, if I'm correct on that, and it doesn't say anything about it in the the manual, if I'm correct on that, it means that that you know the grandson number one could be watching SpongeBob SquarePants that's been saved on here. Uh, grandson number two could be watching on one iPad. Grandson number two could be watching Curious George on an iPhone. Hmm. Both video files stored on here, um, streaming separately to the different devices. Super, super cool. That's interesting. Um, the limited, it has a four-hour battery life. So you would think, well, okay, I'm limited to four hours. There's not a lot of streaming I could do. But it will charge automatically and, and allow, still be allowed to stream if it's plugged into any USB port other than a computer. When it's plugged into a computer, you can't stream from it to it because it's it's, wanting to, it's wanting to sync yeah. as a as a flash drive. But any other devo- any other thing. So if you plug it into a USB charger in your car, it's going to continuously charge the battery. You're never going to run out of battery. Or if you plug it into the Anchor battery brick that I showed you guys a long time ago, um, it, it the battery will run never, forever. Forever, yeah. Or you know they have those lipstick little external chargers. Mm-hmm. So think about think about going on a trip um if you have a flight a five-hour flight you could store two movies on here you could store a whole whole bunch of stuff digital content and you wouldn't even have to have it you could have it in your carry-on luggage uh or you could have it in your your luggage above you in the overhead compartment if you wanted to but you know you wouldn't even have to have it um, physically next to you but it would continue to stay on and continue to be accessible that whole trip Really, really cool. I was really pleased to pick this up. I think I got it on sale for about twenty five dollars. Um, it's we looked today. It's about it's like thirty five or thirty. Well, no, six sixty is the kind of retail price. Um, and we found retail. it at uh, Amazon for like forty dollars, thirty nine yeah. something. And that that number may be different by the time the video airs. Um, I, I need you to share the link. I will. I'll share a link for this. Um, there are other devices that do the same thing. Uh, there are some that are little boxes that you can plug USB drives into um, that allow for multiple connections. Um, this one happened to be the one that was on sale. And I like the fact that it's so small. I, I'm able to keep this in my little go bag, my, my gadget bag that I keep inside my backpack um, in case I ever need it. I also liked how easy it is to add files to this. Um, and, you know, again, with the small form factor, I can carry this in my pocket, um, turn it on and off as needed, and still be able to connect and share those files. Um, so, uh, really, I think it'll be really great if we ever take another road trip or, you know, maybe when we go out to um, to Nashville or something to be able to get those files off of our phones because that's always a big hassle. It is. It is. That's cool. So. I like that. Thanks. Me too. Yeah, and the deal with our phones, when you're someplace where you don't have a Wi-Fi connection, you can't take those big files off your phone without it you can't using email them. so much of your data. And sometimes if you wanted to upload it directly to YouTube, for example, you can't upload as high def. Right. So, but they can be big files you need to get off your phone. That's a great idea with uh, without having to plug your phone in and go through iTunes. Yeah. The the other option is you can download from your phone onto this and then plug this directly into your laptop in the event that you've forgotten or left your, your cord. transfer cable transfer cord. Ah. So um, clever. Yeah. Clever. Um, okay. So we have we, we have, have a, a question. We have a question from last week. Yeah. Go ahead. What was it? Question from last week was, can you name some outrageous goal that you want to accomplish in your life? Something outrageous that's that's on your bucket list. Yes. Okay. I named my goal Hector. <laughs> I don't know about outrageous goal. I want to go skydiving. <laughs> okay. You know, and so that's more or less outrageous depending on who you're talking to. <laughs> um, you know, it, thinking 
thinking outrageous goal. I, I would like to. I would like to be able to become financially self-sufficient, which is a big goal. Um, you know, I think we've talked before about Pat Flynn and um, smart you know, passive income. Smart passive income, the possibility of making money on the internet through YouTube, through selling digital products. All of those things I find really intriguing, and I like the idea of being able to um, work full time doing something, creating art that you enjoy, um, and be able to make a healthy living to support your family. Um, and so, you know, that that's a goal. That's a goal. It's parts of it's a, it's a lot of hard work. I just started reading a book called the the four hour work week and i have read so little of it that i can't even comment on whether it's good or not but i'm really excited about it because what's the premise of it uh working a four hour work week um (laughs) kind of very similar to pat flynn and what he talks about in smart passive income the idea is that um, there are a lot of places that we can be working smarter and we're working harder a lot of uh, inefficiency in the way that we do business and the way that we the way that we are business people um, that uh, if we cut those things out that would that would improve time um, but then this is a guy that has figured out kind of how to to do the work that he does on the road has discovered that it costs him less to to travel the world than it did to have a, a monthly mortgage hmm. and um, and so it talks about you know the, the things that I've skimmed through the, the the things that I've looked at so far a lot of them are about um, a lot of them he hasn't yet taken the, the premise of or the position of you need to quit your job and figure out another way um, the premise is you need to stop wasting time working inefficiently hmm. don't check your emails 8,000 times a day check them three times a day Quit multitasking because you're not effective when you multitask. You don't accomplish things. Quit. Um, start being honest with yourself about the work that you're accomplishing. Are you actually doing work? Or are you just staying busy? You know, is is what you've done today um, productive toward reaching your goal, or is it just making you feel better about about being at work? Um, stuff like that. So, I don't know. It's interesting. I'll let you know more as, as I read it. I, I, I uh, was just looking through it um, as we were setting up, actually. It's re- really good what I've seen so far. The 4-Hour Workweek. And it's a book that, that all of those guys that do smart passive income, that are making money on the internet, that are making money through you know home businesses, every single one of them I've seen has recommended this book as hmm. one of their like top 10 books that right, was that's, transformative. That sounds good. Yeah. All right, well, mine is very similar because as I got to thinking about this, it's like, well, gosh, I'd love to take the entire family. I mean, it's a lot of people in my family, and let's go someplace. And it it would be a burden on so many of them financially. I'd love to be able to pay for everyone to go do something together, to do a family reunion or to go on a cruise or do something. And so what that takes me right back to is some of the stuff you're talking about is things that are entrepreneurial in mm-hmm. nature and uh yeah we sell missouri mirrors from corn cob pipes and we sell a, a fair number of them and uh i don't think that jandy could have a job earning what she's earning for us if she were outside of our home that's my bride jandy and really honestly um uh, you know what i think next week we should talk about communications because that that came to mind this week as a topic that relates to Aristocob and, and how we communicate with, with one another and how you can communicate with us. Anyway. Telepathy. Right. But so many of the things that I would love to do tie back to, well, I have to have the financial wherewithal to make that happen. And uh, so I, I would say it. my outrageous goal, like yours, is to be able to have money not be a concern. Hmm. And that, that involves... Um, business and investment and things like that. And then with that gives us the opportunity to do more giving, to do more right. sharing and, and to, to help others. So um, there's the goal. The goal, I guess, is to be a bit of a philanthropist. 
know how mom feels about that. To do that, you got to have the money to do that. Yeah. So. Yeah, and for 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 me, a big part of it too is is I'm not interested in. Um, I was talking to a kid the other day. He's 21. He's in college for business, and he did an internship, and he was miserable, and he was going out working for this guy who is uh, spent fifteen hundred dollars on dinner for six people um, and goes to this restaurant most nights of the week everyone there knows him and and you know he's, he's like yeah this guy's making three hundred thousand dollars but he's spending you know all of it and, right. and and that's fine but he works he works 90 hours a week and right um i, know, I noticed that too uh, from people that i know who are financially successful the ones that appear to be successful are spending right. commensurate with their earning. Right. There, it, it's it's all completely relative. Right. Um, it's uh, if you ever read the Millionaire Next Door, yeah. that that talks about how the people that are actually going to end up with something to share are those people that are uh, driving a work truck and have some right. ladders on the roof of the car and employ a few people to help them in a lawn right. care business, things like that. Yeah. Those uh, those things and having reasonable a reasonable lifestyle, yeah, are the ways that you amass wealth. Yeah, you know, and uh, what's the point of having the money if you're immediately paying it right out, right every month and, and going month to month just like everybody else is, or like this guy earning the money doing miserable work, too, right? You know, and and f- the what is most appealing about some of those concepts, smart passive income is, is getting, finding ways to, to earn a living, doing something that you enjoy creating, creating, creating right. art and, and doing something, um, good, you know, um, so good answer. Yeah. Love to know your answer to that question. So in the comments below, answer the question, what outrageous goal do you have in your life? Skydiving. And, our question for next week, which answer this on next week's question give, uh, video. Give yourself some time to think about it. So here in the comments, answer the question about uh, your goal. Question that we're going to think about for next week is, and I'm stalling because I... German tobacco is pretty okay. That's... You see that we didn't... That's Savinelli Black Cavendish. It's not really German that we tobacco. It's, well, it's got German on it. Yeah. You see that we didn't smoke it a lot, so it's okay. Just okay, yeah. All right, here's the question for next week. Uh, what is something popular now that annoys you? Oh, I'm coming for you, question. <laughs> I got a list. All right, with that, you guys make it a great week, and we'll see you next week. Later, guys.